I will show you a couple double attacks of my own. All right. Can everybody see the screen here while he's putting putting this position up? It's still okay? All right, great. All right, so how can you make a double attack in this position? Everybody look, don't call out. I want to give a chance for every all the kids here to get it. Got a couple answers, you know? Okay, some people know. All right, great. You can sit down now. I'll talk about it in a second. Let's see. We got a few kids answering. A few kids got it. Do you guys have it over here? No? Yeah? What's, what's your name there? And You got it in the purple and pink jacket? Yeah? What about you? Um, it should be four to, to see, to see three. Excellent. Very good. Now that's a double attack because it hits this king here and this rook, right? So one of them has to go. The king would have to move and then the bishop would eat the rook, right? How many people here know algebraic notation? Because that's what, uh, that's what, what's your name? Who, yeah, the one who just answered the question about bishop check. Your name is? No, in front of you. What's your name, Sam? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Alexander used algebraic notation. Everybody in the class knows what that is? Okay, excellent, great. Who taught you it? My dad. Your dad taught <laughs> you? Awesome. Books. Brooks? Books. Books, okay. Books, excellent. Yeah, I mean, algebraic notation is really important. We'll review it in just a second. But uh, bishop takes b2 here, and now white is up a bishop, and that's really good. You can double attack with any piece in chess. Uh, how about this position? Black to move. <coughs> Black to move here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Pawn to f4. What is that? And it's also a check, right? So the pawn is checking the king. Yeah, the king can't take it because it's protected by this. Exactly. Very good. And then we just uh, take this rook off, and that's that's great. And you can't go down because All right. Now here's how about this one? This one's white to move. This one's white to move. And then we'll take a look at the the position that Samuel set up for us. Yeah, in the back, the, 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 who, your dad taught you algebraic notation. Oh, knight to d8. Knight to d8. Very good. And what are the two pieces that that attacks? In the, in the purple and the pink? <coughs> Excellent. Right. So the king has to move, and then you get to take the rook off. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. Very good. All right. Um, okay, now this one's a bit harder. This is like one step above... This double attack, white to move. Yeah, white to move here. If it was black to move, what would black do? If it was black to move here, what do you think black would do? That's a good way to start. Um, who said take the bishop? Okay, good. Well, whoever said it, take the bishop would definitely be what I would do if it was black's move, but it's white's move. So what should white do? Okay. Take your time. And what was your name again? Sierra? Okay. So Sierra is going to set up, trying to set us up a cool position over there while we solve this. So white to move and try to find a really great double attack. Um, yeah? Well, if we take the bishop, then the queen would recapture, right? So that's not exactly a double attack. That's just a capture. Now, you should always be looking at capture, so I'm glad you looked at that. But let's try to find a move that attacks two things at once. In addition to attacking pieces, what else can you attack in chess? Threatening to take your opponent's piece, Threatening your opponent's king, also known as check. What else can you threaten? What's one of the most 
difficult threats to meet in chess. Yeah? Queen a6, the problem with that move is that if you play queen a6, uh, your oh, opponent can do what? Take, take the queen, right? We don't want that. We don't want to leave our most powerful piece and take, right? Um, in the blue shirt. Yeah? Queen to c6 is a really great idea because it's taking advantage of what loose piece? Um, who, whoever's playing with the clock, can you stop that for now? We'll play with them later. I just, uh, I'd rather... I can hear all the beeps. So after queen to c6, you're taking advantage of the fact that there's that rook on a8, which is loose, right? And whenever you have a piece that's loose in chess, it's liable to be taken. But here, if you were black, what would you do? Where can you move it to? Yeah? To move it to b8. Right, you can move this rook to b8, and it seems like no harm, no foul, right? So let's find an even better move. Find a better move. What else? I, I, was, I was trying to say, besides attacking pieces and checking, what else can you threaten in chess that's really difficult? What, what's the biggest threat that you want to make besides a check and attacking a piece? Checkmate. Yes, you want to try to threaten checkmate because without threatening checkmate, you know, the only way to really win the game is to stumble into checkmate or if your opponent, like, forgets and leaves it hanging. So you want to try to threaten checkmate at all times, well, obviously there are cases where threatening checkmate would be a mistake, but we always got to look for our checkmate threats. Um, in the green shirt. And the other green shirt. <laughs> yeah. Queen to h4. Queen to h4. Okay, so let's see. If that's a double attack, what are the two things that it, it attacks? Somebody tell me what that attacks. So there's one really obvious thing that it attacks, right? What does it attack? Where's the checkmate threat? It's on h7. Very good. Queen takes h7 is a checkmate threat, right? That's one of the most common checkmates in chess when you have the queen right against the king and the, ki and the, the queen is protected by a piece. So that's a very important checkmate threat. Now, if you were black, how would you stop that, that threat? Stopping checkmate is key. In the glasses, yeah? Excellent. Very good. So you would stop the checkmate threat by moving the pawn because the queen can't jump over the pawn, right? And but now, the the and you're threatening to take the bishop. Excellent. You're threatening to take the bishop. So, and that, that, we, should, uh, that we should also point out that if queen h4, if your opponent takes the bishop, now what does white do? Ooh. Now what does white do? Yeah? No, taking the bishop would lose the queen, right? Did you know in the in the in the blue stripes? Okay, so yeah, if we take here, then we lose our queen because that queen on uh, d8 protected. In the yellow, yeah. Still, we still have the checkmate, right? Because the bishop taking that bishop didn't change anything. This king still can't flee to f8 because the rook's in the way, and it still can't take the queen because it's protected by what? Exactly. Very good. So. Queen h4, now instead that the young man who suggested h6, very good idea. Uh, but now what can white do to still maintain a really good position? Remember, the goal in chess is to checkmate your opponent, and along the way, it usually helps if you capture a lot of their pieces. Because whoever has more pieces is more likely to checkmate, right? So how do we capture some pieces right here? Capture some pieces. Let's start taking the men off. Yeah? Excellent. Bishop captures e7. Now we're attacking the queen, and the queen can't capture because what? Queen. Right, the queen will recapture. So this queen instead has to move, right? Say it moves here. Now what can we do? Take the rook. How many people want to take the rook on f8? How many people don't want to take the rook on f8? Why, what do you want to do instead of taking the rook on f8? Okay, no problem. Um, well, let me ask you this. How many points is a rook worth in chess? Five. And how much is the bishop worth? Three. Three. Okay, so if we play bishop takes rook, how much are we going to be gaining in that? Five. Two more points. Two. Exactly. So, 
So there's a uh, there's another there's another word for this. When we get a, a rook for a bishop, we sometimes call that winning in exchange because it's such a typical way to win material on chess. So we're just gonna be up a lot of material here, right? Like how many? How much are we up now? Somebody want to do the counting for me? Um, nope. Because remember, we're not starting. We're, yes, in the purple. How much are we up here? Is white. Very good. We're up, exactly, we're up five points, or you could just say we're up a rook, right? Because if you cancel everything out, we've got one rook. We both got two pieces, we both got, we both got eight pawns, we both got a queen, but I have two rooks and you have one. Very good. All right, here we got another one. This is a little tricky. Now we have to actually set up the double attack. This one's black to move. So try to find a good move here for black. You're going to set up a killer double attack. I hear some oohs, but let's let's let me give you like another ten seconds for everybody else who who didn't get it right away. Oh, <laughs> you're counting down the ten seconds. Oh, I like that. Yes, in the blue shirt. Okay, that's a very good idea. But if you play knight c three immediately. You are attacking two pieces at once, but what can white do that would be that would uh, make it just an even trade? Uh, yeah. No, not your knight. What can white take? White can't take the knight, but white can take something important. Exactly. Very good. So white can just take the queen, and then when you take my queen, we uh, we I'm actually still ahead, right? So anyway, you got, anyway, you've got a better idea to try to execute the same thing but stronger. Okay. Yeah? Queen to c3 check, not a bad idea, but it's not really a double attack. I could, I guess I could just move my, um, probably go here. This one's hard, you gotta set it up. This is a two move combination. A lot of the combinations I've been showing, it's like you make one move and it's awesome. Here, you gotta set it up. Yeah? You can take what? No, we're looking, we're trying to find a good move for black. Good move for black. Try to find a good move here for black. Yeah? Not yet. We want to set that up, though. That's, that's what we're going to do ultimately. But right now our knight's right here, so we need to set it up. So somebody suggested knight c3 immediately, but then the rook takes the queen. So how do we set it up, yeah? This one's a little hard, yeah? Um, knight to f... If we play knight f6... What's that? If we play knight f6, they, again, the rook will take the queen. So we want to stop the rook taking the queen first, somehow, yeah? Queen a5 check that's similar to the person who suggested queen c3 check. Definitely worth looking at. You always want to look at checks, but there's something better, yeah? Um, um. <laughs> rook a8. Uh, rook a8, um, interesting idea, but after rook takes queen, rook takes, I don't see a clear follow-up. I just move my king up. Yeah? Um, queen captured d1. But you just gave up a queen! Okay, so let's see if somebody else can figure out the ending to that. So now I'm forced to play king takes queen, and what can black do now? Somebody else? Let's see somebody else. Sierra? Excellent. Very good. Absolutely perfect. Yes, now knight c3 check, and we're, we're forking the king and the queen, the two most powerful pieces, and we end up up some pawns and much better than the other situation, right? So you see, that's a two-move tactic. We had to actually calculate in advance what our opponent was going to do and then how we were going to respond. Mm -hmm.